mentioned before, Alexa Lavoie is there getting half a dozen interviews. I love the fact that Rebel News is back. Not that we ever went away. I guess the better way to say that is the Conservative Party is back under the timid, uh, cowardly lion, Aaron O'Toole and Andrew Scheer before him. The Conservative Party didn't like to talk to Rebel News. I think we're the same we've always been. We ask questions in the name of our viewers. We answer to our conservative conscience. I really don't think we've changed. What's changed is the Conservative Party is actually conservative again. So they're not afraid of actual conservative questions. It's a delight to hear Alexa having so many interview requests met. There's good panels. I looked at the agenda. There's a panel on censorship, censorship, a panel on global warming from the skeptic's point of view, fighting foreign influence, etc. Looks like a substantive and genuinely right-wing event. I even see that Imperial Tobacco has a hospitality suite. That shows that they're not as politically correct as they might be. I want to show you a video clip that I saw earlier today. It's a heckler heckling Pierre Polyev during his keynote speech at this conference. I want to play it for you, and then I have two observations I'd like to share. Here, take a look at the heckler who's then escorted out. I want you to watch this clip. Take a look. I think that heckler's pretty boring. Just a non-player character, as the kids say. Just reading the same script as any professional environmental protester. I don't think she was interesting. What was interesting is how young that crowd looked. At first, I thought, what, was this a youth event or a youth meeting at the conference? No, that's the conference. That is the face of conservatives in 2024. I compare that to any time I see a crowd shot for the NDP in particular. The Conservative Party of Canada in 2024 is the party of young people. And did you see that lady at the end eating an apple? What was that all about? Well, remember this amazing viral video from a few months ago, the original apple eating video? Taking the page of Donald Trump's book, but what are you also, talking about? What page? What page? Can you give okay. me a page? Give me the page. You keep <laughs> in, saying in terms, that. in terms of tur turning things quite dramatically in terms of of Trudeau and and the left wing and all of this. I mean, you 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 make quite a you know it's it's quite a play that you make on it. So I'm, I'm not just sure. I don't under, I don't know what your question okay. is. Okay, then forget that. Why should Canadians trust you with their vote? Common sense. Okay. Common sense for for a change we're going to make common sense common in this country we don't have any common sense in the current government you know the guy prints 600 billion dollars grows our money supply by 32 percent in three years that's growing the money eight times faster than the economy no wonder we have the worst infl inflation in four decades i'm going to cap spending cut waste so that we can balance the budget and bring down inflation and interest rates. You'll want to be able to pay your mortgage again. You want to be able to afford rent. Then you have to vote for Pierre Polyev because I'm the only one with a common sense plan that will bring back the buying power of your paycheck. Just classic. I sort of wish I was there. Hey, let me leave you with three clips from Polyev's speech because I watched it and it was actually a pretty good speech. I want to play a really long cut because it's one big idea woven into three parts. Here is Pierre Polyev taking a battering ram to the snobby, condescending, elitist view that the liberals are better than you, that they know what they're doing and you don't, that they're safe hands for the country, that conservatives are like cowboys that can't be trusted. Listen to this. I think Pierre Polyev demolishes the Liberal Party and all of its enablers. Take a look at this. Don't go away. I'm going to come back. I know this is a long clip, but you got to watch the whole part. Take a look. 
Merci beaucoup. Who's ready to axe the tax? Who's ready to build the homes? Who's ready to fix the budget? Who's ready to stop the crime? J'allais commencer mon discours euh, en parlant de mon plan de gros bon sens, de couper taxes et impôts, bâtir des logements, réparer le budget uh, et stopper les crimes. I was going to start my speech today uh, as properly scripted by my team, talking about my common sense plan to axe the tax, build the homes, fix the budget and stop the crime. But I was interrupted by the testimony I just read from our very own Prime Minister just yesterday. He said something incredible, although not so surprising. Of course, what we're investigating <laughs> is whether a foreign dictatorship interfered in our democracy in multiple elections to help him win. A communist dictatorship seeking to keep in office someone who said he admires that communist dictatorship. But his defense actually speaks for itself. The Prime Minister was asked why he didn't do anything about this interference, even though he was warned in briefing notes, is that he doesn't read briefing notes. <laughs> now, we often don't believe the things that this guy says, but I think that most Canadians would believe that defense. <laughs> I think it's plausible that Justin Trudeau doesn't read documents that come before him. Um, in fact, I think it's likely that he doesn't read things that come before him. And I think that that defense is interesting for three reasons. One, because the ivory tower elites who support him and his ideology of concentrating all the power in their and money in their hands, uh, they seem, they always tell us how wonderfully sophisticated and cosmopolitan they are how brilliant they are, and that's why they're entitled. They're experts, after all, right? Uh, that's why they're entitled to decide for other people. Um, but yet they're prepared to support a guy who says he doesn't read. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, he might be a know-nothing, but he's our know-nothing, right? <laughs> I thought that was actually a really good point. The liberals always say they're better, smarter, professional -er. They're not. They've got a bit of an idiot as a leader. The second point that Polyev makes is that Trudeau's actually not even a liberal in the real meaning, the true meaning, the good meaning of that word. Look at this clip. See, the thing is, it's not that Justin Trudeau is too liberal. It's that he's not liberal at all. He is deeply, deeply illiberal. He uses the soft blue eyes and fluffy hair and fancy socks, and more importantly, the historic brand of the Liberal Party built up by such great leaders as Laurier and many more who followed him as a cover for what is a radical departure from the Canadian way, a radical departure that sees in every way that the people are to be made small so that the government can be made big. He dis and we see the, the consequences of this. You see, even if he were competent, it is not possible for any one person to run 40 million other people. It is simply not possible. Humans are far too complicated, their interactions far too numerous for one central authority, no matter how wise and virtuous it claims to be, to make all the decisions for them. It has to leave them to make as many decisions as possible for themselves. Worse yet, so when you have the only thing worse than having some all-knowing elite try to control everybody's life is to have someone doing that when he doesn't even read his briefing notes. <laughs> Just one last clip I want to show you. Here's Polyev talking about rescinding censorship laws. That kind of freedom is what Canadians have always come to expect. It is what has always worked. And so we will repeal the censorship laws, C-11. We will require university campuses, implement a respect for Section 2B, Charter Rights of Free Expression, as a condition of getting federal funding. If you want to... If you want... 
you don't like Jordan Peterson? Fine. Try debating him for once, because you can't shut him down. You can't shut down people you disagree with. You have to have open and honest debate, which has always been the Canadian way. Well, what do you think? I think that this conference looks great. It looks energetic. It looks big. It looks young. It looks like it's on the march compared to Justin Trudeau, who looks, I don't know, like he's got the cognitive power of Joe Biden, like he's listless, like he's playing old moves that might have worked and been cool in 2015, but don't really work in 2024. You know, the other day, he went to a grade school where the kids were sort of prepped by their pro-liberal teachers, and Trudeau was hiding around the corner, and he brought them free pizza. Here, just take a look at this clip that Trudeau put online the other day. Yeah, I guess in 2015 that would have been really cool and young, but in 2024 it, it looks sort of pitiful. Here's the prime minister who anywhere he goes in public is jeered and heckled. The only place he can guarantee that he has a warm reception is grade school kids who have been primed by liberal teachers and he has to bribe them with a slice of pizza. And he still, of course, uses his own camera crew in case any of the kids say anything unscripted. Justin Trudeau... I don't think that he's going to let go of the reins, and in a way that's good, because he's going to drive his party right into the history's dustbin. Stay with us. An interview with Robert Krejcik is next.